You're considering bringing in a salesperson because right now you're in a situation where you have more leads than you know what to do with. Maybe you have a database of people, but there's nobody proactively reaching out to them, or you got new leads coming in and same thing. You just don't have anybody to reach out to them, start those meaningful conversations, book them into appointments and take them and turn them into paying clients. If that's a situation that you're in right now and you're considering bringing in a salesperson, whether it's a setter or a closer, I'm gonna answer exactly how many leads you need before you bring in a salesperson. So let's get into it. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves and get to exact numbers, I have to address a few things. The first of which is that all leads are not created equal. Some leads like referrals can convert at 60, 70, or even 80%, especially if you're doing something like sideways prospecting and you have a really good referral partner that knows your ideal criteria. Other leads like, for example, if it's an organic Google search and then someone hit your site and then they requested a quote, those can convert at upwards of 30 to 40%. On the other hand, you have leads that you reached out to cold on LinkedIn, or you have data that maybe you downloaded and you want a cold email to, completely different conversion rates. And to me, the real holy grail that we're gonna look at is cold traffic, and we're gonna get to that in a second. Before we do, the next thing I gotta answer is, what is a lead? I've talked to thousands and thousands of business owners, and when I ask them, how many leads are you generating a month, I'll get a wide variety of answers. I'll usually follow up with, how do you define a lead? Now I've heard people say a lead is defined as a qualified booked call. I've heard other people say that a lead is somebody who's filled out an application or a quote, request for quote form. I've heard other people say that a lead is name, email, phone number. I've had other people refer to uh, information that they scraped off the internet for their target niche as leads. So how I define a lead is somebody who's given me their name, and some form of contact info, so maybe name and email, or name and social media, or name and phone number, and effectively they've given me permission to message them about whatever problem it is we solve or solution we offer. So they said, hey, Mike, I'm interested, I'd like to know more. So they downloaded a lead magnet, they registered for a webinar, something like that. That's what I consider a lead. And for us, ideally, I want name, email, and phone number because that's where I have the owned media. This is the media that I control. I can build my database and I can really control how I communicate with people when I have name, email, and phone number. So that's what we target, but some of our clients are running Instagram shout outs or they're running ads to Facebook Messenger and so they're getting conversations there. But a lead to us means someone who raised their hand and gave you permission to reach out to them. And our goal is to be able to convert cold traffic into paying clients because that's the holy grail. That's where you get like real predictability, you get the scalability, and you start to have control over your life and over your business, and it becomes a lot more fun. It makes it easier to forecast your hires because you know what your inputs are to get specific outputs, and you can start to get there and notch your way up. That being said, usually what I'm targeting whenever I'm starting out on a cold traffic system is a 1% lead to sale. So if someone downloads my lead magnet, I expect 1% of those people to turn into paying clients. Now you might feel like, Mike, isn't that like a little bit crazy low? Weirdly enough, the answer is no. I've seen a lot of cold traffic systems and that's pretty consistent across people who are in a position where they're able to scale. Now, it is low because we can oftentimes do in our stuff once we get optimized and we're really tight, we can hit 3% lead to sale or 5% lead to sale. But I'm gonna come back to that in a second. The first thing though is I want the math to work at 1%. So let's say for example, I have a $10 lead cost and a 1% lead to sale. What's my client acquisition cost gonna be? A thousand bucks. So if I'm selling a high ticket product or service at a $5,000 price point, then that would make my return on ad spend a five to one or a 5X return on ad spend. That's something that's fun, that's something that's scalable, and that's something that we can really do good on. So that's what I'm looking. I want the economics to work at 1%, and over time, as we refine and optimize and get better and get tighter with everything, we can push it upwards of 3% to 5% lead to sale. And 
As you're starting to scale, what's gonna happen is your ad costs will rise because you're going to colder pockets of the market. It's just kind of how it goes as you're scaling. So you'll be able to continue to optimize, push your three, 5% lead to sale, and you can keep making that economic work at scale. So that's a big thing. That's what I'm looking for is to make sure I'm focused on cold traffic primarily, unless we're doing some sideways prospecting stuff, which I like to sprinkle in even when I'm going after cold traffic. And ideally I wanna have both in tandem because I'm a big believer of multiple multi-channel lead gen. But 1% lead to sale on cold traffic and we're in the right spot. Now that we've covered all of this, how many leads do we need in order to bring in a setter or a closer? Ideally, what I'd like to see is about 500 leads a month coming in off of cold traffic. So maybe they're opting in for your webinar or they're downloading your lead magnet. And say, for example, you're at an ad spend of it's $10 per lead, you're getting 500 leads a month, you're spending $5,000 a month in ads, that's probably a good indication that you're, as long as you're converting 1% of those and you have a high enough price point for your economics, you could bring in a setter or you could bring in a closer and it's gonna work. Occasionally I may go lower than that, but 500 is generally a good sort of guideline. If you're seeing a 3% lead to sale, but you're at a, about a 300 leads or you're, you're at 200 leads, then I still might make an exception there. Ideally though, I wanna see about 500 to 1,000 leads a month. If you're in that sweet spot, then when you bring in a sales rep and you're converting at a 1% lead to sale, you will be able to have a successful hire, you can ramp them up, they'll lock in, and you can keep them long term. So. Hopefully that helps you have more clarity as you're considering to scale your business. And ideally you want your leads to really be focused on one opportunity or one offer or one product with one messaging path. That's where it's really running smooth. If you're say for example, generating 500 leads, but you got seven different offers with six different messaging paths, that's where it gets super complicated. I would generally hesitate to bring in sales reps into that situation. I want 500 leads who are saying, I wanna download the guide on how to become the best speaker in the world. Perfect, and then your offer is something that's congruent with that. So we help you get speaking gigs or we help you um, design your and tell your story and get your message out in the world. That's a perfect situation. If I see 500 leads, the lead magnet's congruent with the offer, then we can bring in sales reps and we can scale that thing fast. So that's it. Put that into practice, use that as a guideline. If you have any questions, drop them beneath here. You can also check out another video I have where I talk about the five questions I ask as a remote sales pro before taking on offers. This will help you step into the shoes of the people who are considering working with you and you can make sure that you set things up and you ask the right questions or you're able to provide the right information to make them feel confident and to make them feel like, hey, if I, if I bring on a real professional salesperson, I'm gonna give them everything that they need for them to achieve success. So happy scaling, get after it. Hopefully that video gives you some clarity and if you liked it, please be sure to smash the like button as well as subscribe, hit the bell so you get all notifications and drop a comment below just so I can know what was your biggest takeaway from this video and I'll see you in the next one.